What's up, everybody? Mike here. In this video, I want to go over some new details and updates regarding Dragon's Dogma 2 we got from Tokyo Game Show, as well as some other information revealed not too long after that. So let's dive right into it. Now, first off, it has been 11 year long years since you know the first Dragon's Dogma came out, first released by Capcom, with both an extraordinary dungeon crawl DLC, Bitter Black Isle, and a remaster since. And fans are just ecstatic about a sequel coming out very soon. We don't have a release date just yet, but imagine hopefully it's coming out next year in 2024 by Capcom. This, you know, this sequel is in some ways possibly, honestly, an amazing miracle because it's not often that you hear that a dormant franchise gets a sequel of some kind that's been gone for like a decade or several decades. And it seems to be a recurring thing that's been happening as of late within recent years. You know, we had Baldur's Gate 3 earlier this year. And then another game that maybe people seem to forget is Devil May Cry 5 by Capcom, you know, that came out years ago, but brought a nice resurgence to that franchise. And on top of that, we got RE4 Remake early this year. Capcom doesn't, be, doesn't seem to be stopping with the remakes. It seems like they're going to do some more and bring back some more, hopefully, other you know great franchises, remake some other games. So I'm excited. I know you guys are too. And whether you've never heard of Dragon's Dogma before or you're a veteran of the franchise, I feel that Dragon's Dogma 2 should be on your wish list. And even if you never played it before, if you're an RPG fan at least, this game looks exciting. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play and check out. Let's start with the first reason, and that being going over vocations, which are the classes of the game. So vocations are making a return to Dragon's Dogma 2. These are essentially the game's classes that come paired with their own set of abilities, equipment, and spells. An example being fighters will raise their shield against enemy attacks and use it offensively as well. you got thieves that don't have shields, but you'll be able to dodge quickly with swift step, avoiding damage before counterattack. Archers can aim with ease with steady shot. And they can also shoot freely without uh, without aiming at all. Mages can heal and help enhance the other pawn's abilities, making the team more powerful, as well as providing a visual indicators that help with the flow of combat. And these are just the basic vocations. You know, there are advanced ones as well, two of which were revealed by Capcom in you know their Capcom showcase of the game, which is the Magic Archer and the Mystic Spearhead. Magic Archer makes a return from the previous game, and the Mystic Spearhand seems to be a spinoff of the Mystic Knight, with more of a focus on aggressive spear-based combat. And while, you know, we don't know currently how many vocations there will be at launch, from the all indications will appear, there will be more than the first title. You can also decide to change your vocation as you're playing, but you have to spend your in-game currency, similar to the first game. As players level up and gain experience, they can take on new skills, some of which increase their damage with certain moves while others are new moves entirely. So this is a sign that players should have more to choose from than before as well. Something that's interesting though, while you're still unable to lock on in general, new options will be available to you that you didn't have before, which is all based on the vocation you choose. And as mentioned before, each vocation will have its own unique way of dodging as well, which just adds a different approach to the first game. Combat in Dragon's Dogma is arguably the most entertaining aspect, and Dragon's Dogma 2 takes the foundation laid by the previous title and builds upon it without making drastic changes. Just like the first game, you have your basic and strong attacks, plus four more powerful and unique moves to take your foes down. Four special moves will drain your stamina more quickly, and you have to pay attention not to run out of stamina, or you'll be extremely vulnerable. It's important to call your mage over to you should you run out of stamina, because you'll be completely defenseless for a time and mages can help you get back into the battle much more quickly. Next, let's talk about environmental surroundings. So just like the first game, you can use the environment of Dragon's Dogma 2 to your advantage while in combat. But this time around, you can throw enemies against a wall, shield bash them into a wall if you're a fighter, and get creative with ways to employ the environment to your advantage. Executions are new to Dragon's Dogma 2, which is a welcome addition. It simply adds to the brutality in the game and gives you that power fantasy feeling when finishing off a creature or enemy. Once the enemy's health gets low, your basic strong attack will execute them once pressed. You can do different executions too, which are all about positioning. If the enemy is on the ground, if you're in front of an enemy, 
behind the enemy, etc. You'll do different executions based on your vocation and play style as well, adding further variety to gameplay. Chaining light and heavy attacks will bring along new combos, which can easily take down basic enemies to very low health, making it easy to trigger these executions. When it comes to enemies in Dragon's Dogma 2, many will be making a return from the previous game, with some new additions as well. And from what we can tell from the gameplay shown, we saw Cyclops. Looks like there's also uh, Syrians, these orc-like creatures, and trolls. There was also a griffin we got to see. So it seems it's going to be a nice, you know, what we've seen already, a nice slice of enemy variety. Enemies will also have parts of their body highlighted, which will reveal their weak points while in combat. Deducing enemy strengths and weaknesses is a huge part of Dragon's Dogma in general. I'm sure fans will enjoy figuring out what those are for new enemies and whether or not there are changes to those old ones. Now let's dive a bit into the pawn system that's also making return to Dragon's Dogma 2. So this is another huge aspect of Dragon's Dogma. Pawns are for all intents and purposes AI companions that assist you in your journey and fill out your party, much like you might find in a traditional RPG. However, there are many more nuances to them than you might be aware, which is one of the reasons why they were so popular in the first game. You will have a main pawn to work with along with two other AI companions through the use of four commands executed via the D-pad. These companions will help aid in exploration, discovery, and combat. Furthermore, it's important to pay attention to what your pawns have to say, especially when you're fighting bigger and more challenging enemies. They'll point out where an enemy's weak spot is, and they can also let you know if an enemy has become more vulnerable after part of an enemy's armor has broken off. This kind of, you know, gives me vibes of Must Hunter in a sense, where if you had you know, your, I believe your handler with you and Monster Hunter World, for example, they will kind of sometimes let you know when a creature is ready to be captured. Beyond the combat, pawns will give you other verbal cues as well. They can notify you of secret areas nearby, treasure, or important items you may have left behind. So this adds, you know, the point of and the fact that it's very important to pay attention to your pawns at all times. Each pawn comes with different skills and personalities, just like the first game. You might have a pawn that's like incredibly selfish. And just wouldn't help, you know, when staggered down, things like that. Let's talk about the game world. It is huge. So exploration is obviously a key element to the game, whether you're in a city, the wild, hilly areas, or caves. Dragon Summer 2 surely looks quite beautiful as you traverse the landscapes and will remind players immediately of its predecessor, which is both nostalgic and comforting. Now, being that I personally have never played the first game, you know, I own it, you know, I do notice that they. Capcom didn't stray too far away from the art style of the first game. They kind of kept with that same art style. And I'm hoping that the final you know, version of the game is even more polished and more beautiful, more vibrant looking than the first game. In addition to exploration this time around, though, is the ox car, which is a new fast travel feature that will take you to and from different locations within the game. But it's a use at your own risk because as enemies can attack you while you are traveling and you may find yourself in combat anyway, and maybe it was something worse than if you had just run on foot. So, once again, this encourages, you know, while you're exploring, use your pawns wisely to find secrets in hidden areas. Take note of anything that blocks doors or secret-looking places, as some of these blockades can simply be destroyed without doing any anything fancy. And with others, you might have to get more creative. So, that about wraps up what I had to talk about in this video, but in my final thoughts here, initial thoughts of this, like, this is very exciting. I'm a big RPG gamer and fan, and that's why I try to focus this channel on mainly is being around RPGs and RPG coverage of some of the best RPGs out there. And with me not having to play the first one, I have not played at all. I'm definitely going to play this and do a playthrough on my Twitch channel, as well as give you guys the playthrough on here on YouTube and go through it i have the dark risen edition you know and possibly even do a modded run on pc that changes up the overall the game difficulty and gameplay overall as i've seen it on there so you know i always like to play these type of games like in a first playthrough get used to it and then go back to it in some way to play it in a different way and it's very exciting so i definitely want to make time for that the gameplay was good the, you know i love different builds different classes that can you know dictate how you approach different scenarios different common situations in a variety of ways i love having options in these type of games and even though you know it has a stamina system right there and i was thinking that at first like maybe it's kind of like kind of like 
Souls a bit, and I don't want to go there because that's one other person I had early on. I was like, maybe it's like a Souls game or Souls like, but no, that's not the case whatsoever. So this is more along the lines of being something like Capcom's version of like a Dragon Age game. I feel like, and you know, and other similar RPGs of old, like a Baldur's Gate in a sense. You know, with the whole high high fantasy aspects of it and feel to it. So I'm very excited about this and can't wait to play it. So let me know your thoughts on this. What do you think about these new details? You know, whether you're a longtime fan or new coming into this series, I want to hear from you in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please drop a like, subscribe if you're new. Thank you so much for watching and all your support, guys. My name is Mike. I'll see you next time.